Welcome. Please wait one second while we connect to the live stream. Hey, Once good morning. You, the beep, you are live. When just, you are finished, just hang up. Uh, just waiting for our phone people to get on. Uh, having some issues with trying to get both of them going, uh, but uh, hopefully they'll. There we go. Uh, they should be on now with our phone people. Sorry about that. Uh, and then we'll just wait for our uh, feed to populate. Oh, oh, good. Here comes a bunch of you guys this morning. Um, it's good to be with you uh, today as we uh, gather around God's Word. We are going to find ourselves today in uh, the, the book of Luke. Luke chapter 6 uh, is where we're at this morning. As we continue our our look at uh, the ways of of Jesus, uh, most of us know the words of Jesus pretty well. Uh, over this last week, we've started to focus on the ways of Jesus, the way that that Jesus lived, and find an example uh, in 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 that. Um, we've been really fo focused on the the blessed life that God wants for us, um, as we looked at Jesus' Sermon on the Mount from Matthew. Um, and how we can share uh, this blessed life with others as, as we are salt and light. Uh, we focused last week on one of the biggest roadblocks to that, namely being worry. And so today and this week, we've turned our attention to looking at, at Jesus and, and how was it that he shared this blessed life with others. Um, well, we've come to discover that, that Jesus did it in a way... Um, that uh, really enabled him to share this blessed life with, with others. And, and, and there was some balance in the way that, that Jesus lived. And as we, as we looked at, at Luke um, chapter 7, it becomes very clear that, that Jesus lived his life in, in this way. And, and it's this, what we call the, the triangle, the up, in, and the out. Uh, Yesterday, we spent some time looking at how important it was for Jesus to spend time with his Father up, uh, in his up relationship. Um, and, and, and really, I mean, in good times and in difficult times, we see throughout the scripture uh, that Jesus is, is very intentional about his relationship with his Father. And we looked uh, yesterday at a very difficult time um, in Mark's gospel uh, where Jesus, uh, before he was going to be betrayed and crucified, uh, went to his father in prayer. Um, his disciples fell asleep on him and three times he went to the father um, and really opened himself up to his father uh, in, in the relationship they had. Uh, and really, uh, we, get, we get an intimate look at, at the, the relationship between Father and Son of the Trinity in this, in this moment and how powerful it is. Uh, and, and really, Jesus wants that for us as well. And here's the thing, if we're going to have it, we need to be intentional about it uh, and uh, make it our, our own. And we've had the opportunity over the last couple of months to really... Uh, get an understanding, uh, a visualization of how it is that we can be people who are growing in our relationship uh, with our Heavenly Father. Um, and that, that begins when we're, we're intentional. It's like any relationship. What we put in is what we get out. And so uh, we seek to be people who grow in this up relationship and make it a priority in our life. But that doesn't mean we can discount those other relationships. Uh, if it's all up, uh, we miss out on the in relationship that God wants us to have with fellow believers, as Jesus did throughout his ministry, and uh, the opportunity to be salt and light as we reach out to those who are far from, from God. And so it's when we can calibrate the up, in, and out uh, that we begin to experience uh, the, the, the life, the empowered life that, that Jesus wants for us. And uh, so today we're going to turn our attention to that in relationship. And um, from Luke, uh, Luke chapter 6, uh, 
we, we learn that Jesus came down from the mountain and he called his disciples to, them, to him and he chose 12 of them whom he also designated apostles. And so Jesus began to choose uh, the, these who would be in relationship with him, in this in relationship, followers, believers, uh, people we need in, in, in our walk with God. Uh, we were not meant to do this alone, and so we need the fellowship of other believers. And I think we've experienced what it can feel like when we don't have that. Something is missing, and we long, we long for it. And more than than that, uh, it it also represents God uh, to the world. Uh, in in Jesus's high high priestly prayer, he he talks about how when we as followers of Christ live together, um, and live life together, it is a blessing to us, but it is also a blessing to others. So in, in John chapter 13, verses 34 and, and 35, uh, Jesus, Jesus talks about this. He says, A new command I give you, love one another as I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, all will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. Uh, and so we are called as followers of Jesus to love one another. It's one of our values. We say we want to love one another together because we have been loved by our Heavenly Father. So we want that love to permeate our relationships. Um, another thing that Jesus talks about in John chapter 17, uh, verse 11, in this prayer, he says, um, I will remain in the world no longer, but they are still in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them by the power of your name, the name you gave me, so that they may be one as we are one. Jesus, throughout his ministry, prays and seeks unity. Uh, and, and we are called to represent that unity of the Trinity. I mean, think about that. Uh, that is who God is, and, and we are the visible, the church is the visible representation of the triune God. We are to be one. Um, and then even uh, further uh, in, the, in, the, in the epistles of Paul, uh, he talks about sharing one another's burdens and one another's joys. Uh, we are in this together, and it, it, we are truly blessed when we live in this in relationship. In fact, we've been invited into it. Uh, that's in, in, invited to, into being people who love and unity and share one another. This is what Jesus wants for us. We call it kingdom living. And what's what we pray for every time we pray the Lord's Prayer? Thy kingdom come. We want to be people who, who experience and share and live in the love of God and the unity of God and the burden sharing and the joys. Um, and that's the invitation we've all been given uh, to be in this relationship with, with one another. But there's also a challenge uh, that goes along with it. We struggle with it. <laughs> uh, we struggle to love as we have been loved. We struggle with unity as we seek to put ourselves first. Uh, oftentimes we don't care about others' burdens and we get jealous of other people's joys. Uh, and, and so there's a challenge that goes along in living in this in kind of relationship. But we need it. We need to be held accountable. Uh, if we don't have anyone holding us accountable, we can just go off uh, on our own way of thinking and our own way of living. And we often, often do. And Jesus, with his disciples, he invited them into this in relationship. We see it here. But it didn't just stop there. Uh, he really challenged them throughout his time with them. He held them accountable. Um, and, and I think it's in this in relationship that we can, we can practice loving one another so that we can go out, as we'll talk about, and love those who are different than we are, who are far from God. Uh, but we have to practice it, and it's in this in the church, in, 
in, in this in relationship that we can practice it so that we can take it out. And who of us, I mean, we've seen it and experienced it very clearly in these last few months, how desperately we, we need it. And, I, and then maybe for you, uh, when you look at the, at the triangle, you know, your up is strong right now, but your, your, your in relationship is, is not as strong as it could be uh, because we haven't been together. Um, and so uh, we want to develop and continue to develop that in relationship. And actually, uh, maybe perhaps... Um, we haven't had the physical uh, ability to be together, but we've had opportunity uh, throughout these these months to, to be together uh, in the, this time at 10, 10 in the morning and on Sunday morning and see how valuable and, and really life-giving it is. And, and really, it's a place then for us to practice uh, loving one another so that we can go out and love others as we'll talk about uh, tomorrow. Um, I won't be with you tomorrow, but we will still have our 1010. Uh, Rachel's going to take it tomorrow. I am at, at a funeral uh, at the cemetery for Leroy Weisbecker, so uh, I won't be with you uh, tomorrow, but uh, Rachel certainly will as, as we look, focus on the out uh, portion of that triangle. Up in and out. It's simple, uh, and it's this place where we can kind of take measurement of, of where we are in our walk with God. Um, and, and living this, this life, this empowered life that, that God wants uh, for us, the way that, that Jesus lived. So uh, in, our, in our prayers uh, for today, uh, continue for the Weisbecker prayer, family prayers for them, uh, those who are dealing with loss. I really, uh, we had a good graduation yesterday, uh, so we continue to pray for those families. Uh, Kelly Dobis, as she heads out to Texas. Uh, we continue to pray that God would provide for us uh, in those areas of need um, as, we, as we seek to move forward, as we transition. Um, recognizing that uh, people are all in different places as we seek to move forward. Uh, and so what an opportunity uh, we have, actually not to just come to church, but I can't wait till that happens, but also to be the church. And Rachel will really touch on that tomorrow and how we can, how we can harness the circumstances we're in right now, to have people gather, uh, not just in church, but in smaller groups, maybe in your backyard or on your patio this summer, and uh, watch worship on Sunday morning at 1010 together, uh, to bring people who perhaps, my guess is, wouldn't come to church, but would be more than open to coming and sitting in your backyard or on your back patio. Um, you know, that's the opportunity we have before us uh, to really uh, to be the church. And so I'm excited about that, and I hope you are as well. Uh, why don't we pray? Father, today we come to you uh, grateful. Grateful that we can walk in the ways of Jesus, who lived this empowered life and who shows us how to live it, as we live in a, our up relationship with you, our in relationship with other believers, and as we seek uh, to have relationship with those who are outside of the body of Christ. Lord, it's, it's a powerful thing when we, when we find calibration and, and can live in these three relationships. It's the way that you meant us uh, to live, and, and when we experience it, Lord, it is a powerful thing. Uh, today, Lord, uh, we thank you for that we are part of your, your body, the, the church, uh, that we can be joined together with fellow believers and uh, really be encouraged and strengthened and a witness to you as we live in love and unity. It's also a place, Lord, where we can be held accountable and a place to practice loving others, uh, which isn't always easy, uh, as, so that we can go out into the world and love others in your name. Uh, Lord, help us uh, today uh, to be people who, who love uh, our brothers and sisters in Christ who are united around Jesus and who, who uh, recognize what a blessing it is to be a part of the family of God. We ask, Lord, your blessing on our family here at Bethel, uh, that you would provide for us in those places where, where we, 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 we lack, uh, as we look for someone to help us in our music ministry, as we move forward with live streaming stuff, as, as we seek to uh, understand how it is we can meet everyone's needs, as we seek to transition back, uh, recognizing, Lord, that things will be, will be different, and yet uh, we have an opportunity, a great opportunity in this time 
uh, to be to be the church, uh, not just go to church. Uh, and we thank you for that, Lord. I pray for those who are grieving, uh, for the Weisbecker family, uh, and for other families who are struggling with loss at this time. Uh, Lord, for those who are sick, uh, we remember and pray for them. Uh, we just continue to pray for a cure to this virus and wisdom as, as we tra continue to transition. And just, uh, Lord, that we could uh, begin to move forward and not be people who are living in fear, but trusting uh, in, in your goodness as we use our, our common sense. Uh, Lord, uh, for all these things, uh, we pray now in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, uh, go this day uh, with God's peace and with God's blessing. And uh, we'll look forward to seeing you Sunday morning at, uh, at 1010. Uh, God's blessings to you and have, have a great day.